Good morning, Bone. Morning, Gary. How are you? Doing great, man. Refreshed and uh, and and reinvigorated from vacation. So a good time to jump in with some Alabama football recruiting scoop. And and you heard my intro there. Just kind of pick it up. It's camp time. There's been a lot going on. I've been gone for a week. Uh, just fill me in and our listeners in on the latest developments from camps as far as uh, some of the big-time official visitors that have been in, uh, guys to keep an eye on, uh, the latest on Alabama football recruiting here in the summer of 2018. Well, it's been a busy summer. I mean, that, that, you know, you, you basically you know, let off with it, talking about the uh, 7-on-7 camps, the high school camps. I mean, just this overall visits. I mean, there's been just so many kids who have come in, and, and the big difference between – uh, you know, this year as compared to, to years in the past, is uh, there's now a recruiting dead period during the summer, which uh, begins on on uh, on June the 25th and lasts for for an entire month. So prospects aren't going to be visiting uh, colleges uh, in the month of July. Right. That's usually a big that's usually a big visit month for a lot of kids. Uh, you know, a lot of kids trying to get to uh, you know as many campuses as they possibly can. So so June has been a very busy month for a lot of football recruits from coast to coast trying to go, uh, you know, from this place to that place to this place to that place just over and over again. And, um, you know, it's also been a busy month for Alabama trying to get all these guys on campus. So we've seen kind of more prospects uh, in Tuscaloosa in the month of June than we've, than we've ever had before. And uh, they have the Champions Cookout on Friday night, which usually is a uh, kind of a, an event where Alabama usually invites about uh, 30 to 40 players, um, and, and it's an event where they cook out, they get a chance to spend time with, with coaches, visit the campus, go to the stadium, see the facilities and all this stuff. And it's, it's usually their, their top-tier target in this in, in this year's recruiting class. And this year, as compared to last year, last year they had about 30, 40 players. This year they had about 60 to 70 players. And, and this ranges from – uh, kids who are going to be uh, you know, seniors this year, or kids who are going to be juniors, there are even some sophomores who are who are on campus as well. And then the following day, there was an O line D line camp and a seven on seven camp wow. on Alabama's campus. So there was a lot going on, and you had a lot of players who you know, may not necessarily be one of Alabama's top tier targets, but they were in town for the seven on seven camp or the O line D line camp, and they were able to go to the uh, to the cookout on Friday night. But you know, we've seen. I would say 95% of Alabama's top targets in this 2019 recruiting class we've seen in Tuscaloosa already this summer. Now there may be there's one or two more guys that I think are going to uh, end, end up visiting when that dead period ends uh, in late July. We're going to see a few more guys visit campus before the start of the uh, before the start of the uh, uh, season, or excuse me, before the start of fall practice in uh, in early August. But um, yeah, I think Alabama's feeling really good about uh, where they sit right now with their recruiting class. Even though they haven't had a commitment um, in a couple of weeks, you know, they currently have 15 commitments, um, and all of them uh, you know, rank pretty high, obviously, with the number one recruiting class in the country right now. And I think with all the kids they've had on campus that are not committed, or maybe even some who are committed but may be committed elsewhere, I think they feel pretty good about them as of, uh, as of today. I do, too. And, and we've discussed this before here on the program. But there is no doubt that last year there was a learning curve for everybody with the December signing period. And for Alabama, which traditionally under Nick Saban uh, was able on some kids to, um, to kind of uh, wait or, or leave them in a situation where, hey, we'll, we'll kind of get back to you. Uh, last year, some of those kids, uh, you know, went ahead and signed uh, with other schools in December or made other choices. And in, in, in Alabama, in the second signing period of February, this hardly ever happens, but was left with scholarships available. Uh, it looks to me like, and, and I'm sure they'll hang on to a couple, uh, as you said, for the, some of the, the guys that are going to wait until February, for, for the most part, the way it's shaping up, the same mistakes won't be made this time. Most of this recruiting class is going to be wrapped up in December. Am I correct? Yeah, I believe so. And I think that's going to be kind of said for, for most recruiting classes throughout the country because what we're seeing uh, is recruits take official visits earlier. Uh, we've seen, we started seeing a lot of, a lot of kids take official visits in, uh, in June. So Alabama's had several official visitors this month. You know, guys who are trying to get their visits out of the way so they're not having to 
scramble and take their visits during the season because you, you can only get, especially let's say you're a kid from California who needs to take your five official visits. Well, it's pretty tough to do that on a uh, you know during the fall, especially if you want to make a decision uh, maybe in early December. Um, you've got to take those vis- most of those visits in the fall, depending on uh, how good your team is and you know what happens if uh, you know you go through a deep playoff run. Um, you know, we're starting to see uh, you know these kids take their official visits in the uh, in the summer, and and majority of them are trying to get them all out of the way before the start of the football season. And um, you know, we'll see how it goes, but I, I do think with Alabama currently sitting with 15 commitments, um, you know, that's 15 public commitments. Now, in my opinion, they probably have about uh, 18 or 19 guys that are on the board right now. They just had some of them; those guys just haven't gone public yet. But I think uh, I think we'll see some guys go public here pretty soon. Andrew Bone, our guest here on the Gary Harris Show, all guests appear courtesy of the Bud Light Hotline, powered by Adams Beverages. As you said, uh, no commitments for the last couple of weeks, and now we're into the dead period. Uh, commitment watch wise, though, who do we need to be keeping an eye on? Who do you think uh, are are some guys that might possibly pull the trigger for Alabama in the near future? Well, I'd certainly watch some guys who have been recently on campus, especially guys who have taken official visits. Two weeks ago, Alabama had several official visitors on campus. Uh, John Mitchie, a uh, four-star wide receiver, uh, who's originally from Maryland but currently attending uh, the Petty uh, School in uh, in New Jersey. It's a prep school. Uh, he had expects to announce a decision here very, relatively soon. I, I would expect within the next week or two uh, he's going to make a decision between Alabama and Penn State. Feel very good about Alabama's chances to uh, to land his commitment. Another kid, uh, Jalil Billingsley, a four-star tight end out of Chicago uh, that attended Alabama's camp last week, uh, did really well. Actually, had an offer from Alabama prior to the camp, but you know, obviously, what you mentioned in the beginning of the segment was uh, you know, a lot of these kids they still need to come to camp. They may get an offer during the spring, but they still need to come to camp because Alabama wants to make sure that you know they're a good fit, that they can coach them up. And, uh, you know, these kids also want to check out the uh, the campus for the first time. But uh, Jalil had a really good camp and obviously had a uh, has a committable offer. And I think he's probably going to be a, uh, a commitment on Alabama's recruiting board here pretty soon. Um, Alabama had a big-time uh, target on campus this past weekend. And Noah Cola Gates, four-star defensive back out of Arizona, it was the second time that he's visited Tuscaloosa. And he came back with his entire family. And this was just an unofficial visit. He was on campus from Tuesday, or excuse me, Thursday until Sunday, and uh, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him uh, jump on board. You know, even though it's a dead period, uh, yeah, I do think that, that there are some players who are out there who have already talked to the coaching staff, kind of let them know their intentions, and um, you know they'll probably, you know, kids will probably release something uh, via social media or a video announcement or something like that. I, I think we'll probably see some of those. Uh, you know, within the next couple of weeks, even though it, it is a dead period. With 15 commitments already in the fold, uh, as you said, you feel like probably two or three more that are privately committed. That 25 number that everything is built around, of course, Alabama may be able to go a little over that this year after a smaller class this past recruiting cycle. But still, spots are filling up. And you have talked about this before. You see a kid go out on Twitter and say that he got an offer from Alabama and you start looking at all these kids that say have a, they say they have offers and you're like, Oh my gosh, there's, you know, this, cl- this class could fill up. But again, I want you to explain there are offers and then there are committable offers. Uh, I get people asking me all the time, what's the difference? Explain what the difference is. Well, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, they, they see a, a list that says, Oh, Alabama is, extended 150 to 200 offers and that's not necessarily the case Alabama you know it, it kind of depends on what time of the year you're in as well because uh, you can see a lot of uh, a lot of kids get offers during the spring um, most of the, I would say a high majority of those offers that we see uh, kids talking about during the spring those are basically come to camp offers we won't you know We've got you an offer if you come to camp and do extremely well. Uh, you know, we still need to see you. We still need uh, Nick Saban to sign off on this. But uh, most of the time, all these assistant coaches, these assistant coaches are going on the road, whether it's uh, Tosh LaFoy or Brent Key or uh, Jeff Banks or Carl Scott or whoever it may be on Alabama's recruiting staff, these guys are going out on the road 
seeing as many prospects as they can, and they're out there extending offers. Uh, uh, hey, you're good enough for me. We want you, uh, you know, but you still need to come to camp. And, and most of the time, these prospects understand that. And they know that they've got an offer, but they also need to know that um, that they've got to come to camp and do extremely well. Now, if we're in the summer or in the fall, um, you know, a lot of times when we see kids get get offered, you know, they may understand that it's conditional, that it's conditional based on Alabama's recruiting board. Alabama has, let's say, you know, that Alabama's offered – five or six running backs. They're only going to take one. And you know, they know, they kind of understand, all right, Alabama's waiting on this kid. Once he makes the decision, Alabama will let me know if I have a committable offer and if I can make that decision. So that happens all the time. And most of these prospects, they're, they're well aware of it. Um, you know, there's been some times where they're not, but most of the time, I'd say about 95% of the time, they're very aware of where they stand. And um, and, and uh, most of the time, college coaches are fine with them promoting that they have an offer because, you know, even though they may not be able to commit to Alabama or may not be able to commit to Georgia or whoever it may be, you know, there's other schools that are out there that you know really like them and they see that they they've gotten offers from Alabama or Georgia or whoever, and uh, you know, obviously they're going to be interested. And in, coaches aren't going to offer scholarships based on. Uh, you know, an Alabama or a Georgia offering, but they're going to look at them maybe a little bit more. They may watch their film a little bit more. They may try to bring them on campus and see what do these, these coaches see in him that we don't, and, uh, you know, it may help them out down the road in terms of going somewhere else. Alabama football recruiting with Andrew Bone. I, I want to ask you this question because we're focused, obviously, on the 2019 class. But how much recruiting is being done right now at the same time, you're trying to wrap up the 2019 class for 2020. How how much intense recruiting is a coaching staff like Alabama already doing for 2020, Bone? There's a lot. You know, obviously Alabama already has uh, has three commitments in this 2020 class, uh, three really good commitments, and and, um, and and they're still going hard after several guys. I mean, we saw we saw a lot of elite players on Alabama's campus uh, this past weekend, um, guys who were uh, considered the top five, top ten uh, in the country. Not you know, not just at their position. We saw Justin Flo, the number one linebacker in the country in the 2020 class from California, uh, come in for the cookout. We saw Savelle Smalls, number four overall player in the country for 2020, also on campus for the cookout and came in for the um, uh, for Alabama's camp on Saturday. We saw Zachary Evans, the number one running back in the country for 2020, um, top. I think he's number six in the country, number six or seven in the country on Rivals.com. Uh, was on campus on Saturday, so a lot of a lot of recruiting going on. You know, there's some kids that I feel like Alabama's probably really close to uh, to landing in that 2020 class. We're probably going to see you know, Alabama has three commitments in 2020 right now. We're probably going to see, I would guess, maybe five uh, or six. 2020 commitments before the start of the season, and uh, I think probably the next guy to jump on board. Is Jason Jones, a big six foot six, yeah. uh, three hundred pound defensive lineman? Uh, I think he could be an excellent offensive lineman down the road. Uh, from Calera High School, uh, has it narrowed down to Alabama and Georgia? Going to announce his decision on July the second. It originally planned on July the fourth, but just recently uh, changed that to July the second. Uh, I think he's probably going to be a uh, an, an Alabama commitment here pretty soon. So that's going to be a uh, you know another big in state get for uh, for the Crimson Tide. Speaking of 2020, um, Reggie Grimes is a player that <clears throat> we remember not that long ago playing for Alabama. Of course, had that big touchdown on a tipped interception return against Florida in the 99 SEC Championship game. His son, Reggie Grimes, the second, quite an athlete there in the state of Tennessee. Uh, Alabama reportedly has some interest. Uh, any chance that uh, Reggie Grimes, the, the second, uh, could wind up following his dad to Alabama? Yes, yeah, it's, it's very possible. Um, you know, it's, it, when I saw that name pop pop across the board uh, a few months ago, I was like, surely, um, you know, surely that's that's Reggie Grimes' son. Of course, at the same time, you're like, God, I'm not that old, am I? And um, it, you know, he's a uh, he's a talented athlete. He's six foot five, about two, uh, just over two hundred pounds. Can play a number of positions. Can play on either either side of the ball. I think uh, most schools are recruiting him just as an athlete right now. Uh, will be, a, uh, as you mentioned, will be a junior this upcoming fall. So, you know, a lot of eyes are still going to be on him, still evaluating him, still trying to figure out, 
you know, what position he can play uh, at the next level. I mean, I, I remember, you know, even though kids may get offers before their junior year, you know, colleges are still trying to figure out, um, you know, what position some of these kids are going to play. Because I, I, I remember several years ago when T.J. Yeldon was in high school, a lot of people thought uh, T.J. is just an athlete playing the running back position. He's going to eventually, uh, you know, end up playing somewhere else. And then he had an unbelievable junior junior year uh, running the football, and coaches started thinking, "All right, well, you know, now we think he's a running back. I think he can play running back at the college level instead of playing uh, wide receiver." And uh, and obviously had a a great a senior year as well, and and became a uh, a terrific player at the next level, and also in uh, in the NFL. But um, you know, obviously coaches are still evaluating, still going to recruit, and um, you know, try to decide what position a lot of these kids are going to play at the next level. Yeah, one to watch for sure. Reggie Grimes a second. Hey, Joe wants to ask you a question, Bone. You all right with that? Yeah, absolutely. All right, on the Bud Light Hotline, Joe is with us. Joe, you're on with Andrew Bone. Hey, thanks for taking my call, Gary. Yes, sir. Hey, along those same lines of Reggie Grimes, that's what my question, but let me ask this. Cornelius Bennett's son, Andrew, at Tennessee, how high was he rated out of high school? Well, he was highly, he was pretty highly rated. Um, yeah, I think early on he had a uh, you know he had a lot of offers early on, and um, you know Alabama did bring him in, but Alabama ended up not offering him a scholarship. So I think that was kind of why he ended up going to Tennessee. Um, I'm sure it, it bothered uh, probably bothered his his dad a little bit in the beginning, but at the end of the day, I'm sure uh, Cornelius is pretty uh, pretty happy with. Uh, with his son getting a full ride scholarship to a to an SEC program, and obviously now, uh, you know, being coached by um, uh, by Jeremy Pruitt and some uh, some other Alabama guys who are up there from the uh, from the program, but but yeah, I mean, he definitely had uh, had some interest and in, and had some interest from Alabama, but just never got a scholarship offer from them. Okay, let's go back to last year, and you hear this, and I hear this all the time. We were setting at second or third. Right at the end, correct. Mm-hmm. That's okay. correct. J.J. Peterson goes to Tennessee. I noticed where Phil Steele in his last pu- this, this publication had him rated the third best linebacker, and the big uh, the big lineman from Texas. Yeah, Bobby he, Brown. He, okay, yeah. Now, how high was he? Do you know? Was he like top ten also? Well, he was. Uh, yeah, he, I mean, he was in the top one hundred. He was one of the top yeah. 100 recruits in the country, but Dion definitely a top 10 defensive lineman. But really, our recruiting was on. We were there. We just lost those two, four and five stars, or five stars, whatever you want to say. Both of them were correct. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, I think the biggest thing last year was just the uncertainty on the coaching staff. There were so many. Uh, there was so many. So much talk about coaches who were going to be leaving even though it hadn't happened yet there was a lot of talk about you know different coaches leaving who was going to be who was going to be named the new offensive coordinator at Alabama because uh Brian Dayball left and went to the Buffalo Bills um you know Mike Loxley you know a lot of people thought it was going to be him but but who really knew I mean nobody knew at the time if, if they were going to stick with him or not uh running back coach you had Burton Burns who uh, who decided to retire uh, shortly after signing day? And even though a lot of these coaches ended up leaving or are stepping off the field after signing day, the rumors were already out there. The rumors were going around uh, different coaching staff. People were talking, and uh, and I think that played a big part in it. And and I think even guys who were on campus, coaches who were on campus who were still on campus, I don't think they knew. I think when coach, when when players were asking them, "Hey, is this guy definitely going to still be there?" They weren't sure, and uh, and, I, and I think that that caused a big effect in Alabama's recruiting class last year. Just the uncertainty of who was still going to be there. Now Nick Saban was still going to be there, and you would you would hope that co- that players aren't making their decisions based on uh, assistant coaches, or um, you know you kind of want them to make their decision based on you know if they feel like the university is a good fit uh, on and off the field. But majority of the time. You know, coaches do matter. Uh, assistant coaches do matter. Um, uh, coordinators yep. do matter. So they they certainly look at that. And I think last year, I think that played a big role in it. And um, you know, this year, it seems like it's a lot different. I mean, they they've got a really solid coaching staff right now who's going, um, you know, just just high octane on these recruits throughout the entire country, and they're doing a great job. Uh, you know, via social media, 
uh, just getting the word out there to uh, different prospects. And obviously, we've seen Alabama uh, promote their new barber shop on on Twitter, which you know they bring in you know they'll bring in guys like Julio Jones and Derrick Henry and Ha Ha Clinton Dick. Uh, and players like that to sit down and just talk about the Alabama football program. And I think that has been very beneficial uh, on the recruiting trail for, for them this year. You know, not only having a, a barbershop in touch with but just recruits being able to see that video. Hey, Bone. Just, Bone, I hate to cut in, but what, Joe, thanks for the call, man. We we have got to, to wrap it up uh, time-wise. Real quickly, uh, thanks for the phone call, Joe. Uh, Bone, tell folks where they can get uh, get all the information that you pass along. Well, please follow me at BamaInsider.com, which is part of the Rivals.com network, and also follow me on my Twitter handle, uh, at Andrew J. Bone. Thank you, Bone. Thanks, Gary.